This is Jeff Owen with Telecom Reseller, and I'm speaking with Alan Percy. He's the Director of Market Development with AudioCo. How are you doing, Alan? Great. Thanks for having me today. Alan, can you give us an overview of audio codes, who you are, where you are, and how big audio codes is? I'd be happy to. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Jeff, the, uh, w one of the unique things about audio codes is, um, uh, is the fact that uh, we're truly our global company. Um, we've been manufacturing media gateways, uh, um, media gateways and uh, enabling technology for some 17 years now. Uh, we um, uh, started out actually with just doing uh, voice over IP algorithms and have grown uh, up into uh, uh, a number of media gateways, enterprise session border controllers, some IP phones and other devices uh, with offices around the globe uh, and, uh, of course, a number of us here in the States with the R&D centers uh, here in the U.S., so uh, a real well-rounded company. Thank you. Now, what does audio codes do for unified communication? Yeah, so that's a great question. One of the things that we'd like to uh, uh, help folks understand is uh, our role in the uh, unified communication space. You know, uh, communication solutions 10, 15 years ago used to be very vertically integrated. There was, uh, you know, if you bought from one manufacturer, you had to buy everything from them, soup to nuts, uh, soft replication, chassis, phones, the whole gamut. Well, a lot's changed since then, and one of the biggest changes has been the market shifting to a more horizontal market where uh, application developers just build a software application that can be deployed in many different mod modalities. Uh, and then uh, there's devices that connect those software applications to the outside world. And this is where audio codes plays, is with our media gateways, our MSBGs, our session border controllers, IP phones, et cetera, providing the connectivity between these applications and the outside world. And one of the key challenges that we've got is making the migration as the uh, industry moves from a primarily TDM-based environment to an all-IP environment. So we uh, provide not only the interface to these different uh, either TDM or IP environments, but also help make the migration happen for the application developers uh, so that it's essentially abstracted away from them. They uh, just develop their application, and we take care of all the current work of connecting it to the outside world. Great. Now, since we're talking about unified communications, could you uh, give us a short overview of just what UC is? Absolutely. So uh, unified communications, I think, uh, across the industry is pretty much accepted to be a combination of features uh, that, um, you know, obviously significantly extend beyond what we're used to with a traditional uh, telephony. So it starts with the unified messaging. That's, that's of course, integrating the, your voice messages into your inbox so that uh, you can retrieve your voice messages from your PC or from your handheld smartphone. But it extends also to include presence, instant messaging, and chat. Uh, also, too, you know, desktop sharing and collaboration. And as we go through this today, uh, we'll understand the power of that. And we found that to be very, very powerful within, within our own business. Uh, and, of course, voice uh, telephony features, the ability to use, you know, what still is the killer app is the ability to communicate to people with your voice, uh, video calling, uh, conferencing, multi-party conferencing, uh, and last but not least is integrating also in mobility. And uh, while we go through today's um, discussion, I want to point out in the bottom right-hand corner, you know, I've, I've put a number of icons that show uh, each of these different capabilities, and as we start to introduce them, uh, you'll see them go from gray to being lit up, sh showing uh, which features and functions are supported. Excellent. That'll be a, a good visual cue. Thank you for that uh, overview of Unified Communications. So I know that uh, Audio Coach has developed a strategy on migrating to Unified Communications, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners would, would uh, be thankful for that strategy. Would you step us through it? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, we usually start our uh, discussion with uh, the point at where we find most businesses today, and the vast majority of businesses are built on two disconnected infrastructures. Uh, the legacy PBX you see across the bottom that's connected to the PSTN, uh, often with a, a legacy voicemail system, uh, some uh, phones that came with that PBX, and, of course, some analog devices, fax machines, et cetera, connected to it. 
In addition to that, we also see that the, most businesses have some kind of Internet connectivity and often a voicemail or, I'm sorry, an email system uh, that includes a Microsoft Exchange uh, environments with, uh, with Outlook clients. And these, um, these separate components uh, really, uh, you know, are not integrated together. They are not dependent on each other. They don't leverage uh, in, any uh, uh, enhanced features by communicating back and forth between each other. So what we do is um, uh, we walk folks through an eight-step process. Uh, and this is just one example of a way to migrate to UC. Um, and frankly, uh, it's the story that Audio Code used and implemented our UC environment within our own business. And it starts with uh, the first step is, is implementing Exchange UM. And this is a way for us, for all the different PBXs that we had within our own business, uh, to disconnect that legacy voicemail system and integrate it into Exchange. And we do that with uh, implementing an Exchange server uh, and uh, deploying one of our own media gateways uh, between the PBX and the uh, LAN. And this provides that connectivity so that the PBX, uh, when someone doesn't answer a call, uh, it forwards the call to the gateway, then the gateway converts it over to SIP and delivers the SIP call to Exchange. And Exchange, of course, can take the message uh, and uh, deliver it into uh, you know, the user's desktop. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is uh, there's also a version of Exchange that uh, can operate in the cloud. And this is, of course, Office 365, and we've been uh, working with a number of customers to help make this happen, too. So this is the end of first step. The step one, as you can see in the bottom right, we've enabled unified messaging uh, in the business. And we move on to step two. Uh, this is going to be adding um, a Microsoft Link uh, as a UC environment, but we're initially only going to enable the presence chat collaboration features. Uh, we um, uh, are going to start with these uh, subset of functions within the UC environment. Uh, it will load, of course, the Microsoft Link on a, on a server and deploy it within the uh, LAN environment. And now, uh, much like sort of Metcalf's law, it's about getting your employees to start to adopt this presence, chat, and collaboration environment. So you can do desktop sharing. You can do instant messaging. You can start to share their presence and get used to that environment. And how Metcalf's law uh, applies is by having groups of people uh, adopt this, is that the more people who adopt it, it, it um, the value of it, uh, increases, you know, sort of with a square, I guess what the theory says. But um, we found it to be very valuable as a way for people to get used to this environment of the, you know, the presence chat and collaboration. Now, one challenge of this environment is we're still doing all our voice calling over the PBX. So we're, uh, we've integrated the two together, uh, but, um, you know, if, if you have to make a phone call from person to person, you're still using your legacy PBX. You're still picking up the phone to actually make the voice call. Uh, and uh, you're not yet using, you know, for example, your PC to make the calls. So next we're going to move on to step three, and step three is uh, starting to activate some of the voice and video features. And uh, you know, this is uh, often you want to pick your sort of, we call it the, you know, the frequent communicator club. It's the remote employees, often your salespeople, others that uh, spend a lot of time communicating amongst each other. And the, and the first step is to uh, uh, is to supersize your LAN and give some consideration of the additional traffic uh, that would be happening with a voice traffic uh, on the LAN, uh, and that of course a lot of folks have already done that. Uh, it's usually not a very complex step, but it's important uh, as we move forward for the rest of this uh, deployment. And now what we're going to do is deploy some of those headsets and uh, maybe even some video cameras uh, to these uh, link clients. And uh, one of the pieces of advice that we found out here with Inside Audio Codes is, um, you know, make uh, a good investment, in good headsets, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, choose some appropriate video uh, resources for your particular business. Um, nothing spoils a, a phone call or the voice experience of the customer uh, worse than a cheap, crummy headset with uh, loose connectors, et cetera, on it. So uh, highly recommend to choose some good headsets. Now we've done that, what we need to do is we need to integrate these folks who have link clients into the PBX. And this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, it's actually a matter of uh, activating the link server voice features uh, into uh, the media gateway that was already deployed uh, for the Exchange server. And one of the unique things about our strategy is that we can do both Microsoft Link and Exchange server uh, with the same gateway at the same time. So this is a, a really powerful tool.
And you'll notice in the bottom right here, we've actually turned on quite a few features here in the UC timeline. Uh, we've added now the presence of chat, collaboration, and now voice, video, and conferencing functions. So making good progress, uh, but a few steps yet to go. One of the uh, next important steps is we think is important is moving the PSTN circuits uh, over uh, to the media gateway. And this is, um, uses an architecture we call drop and insert. Uh, and by making this step, uh, you'll see uh, as we start to move off of the PBX, uh, those PSTN circuits are already moved um, over to the uh, link environment uh, and eliminate some of that, um, uh, you know, the pain of doing the disconnecting from the, from the PBX. The next step uh, for us is uh, step four is migrating to, uh, to SIP phones. Uh, we've got these legacy phones kicking around here. We, we, if some of them are SIP phones, uh, we might be able to reuse them. Uh, if they're uh, legacy TDM phones, it's unfortunately probably not going to be able to use them. Uh, so we have a little uh, technique we use uh, that adds a software module called SPS, or SIP Phone Server. And what this does is it allows uh, existing SIP phones to be able to be integrated into the Microsoft Link environment. It's a set of software that can be deployed either within a media gateway using one of our OSN modules, or it can be uh, implemented on an external standalone a standalone server. And this is a great way to stop those, uh, you know, relatively recent purchases of SIP phones from ending up in the landfill, uh, and it allows you to use a much more diverse line of uh, SIP-based phones, including our uh, our uh, 320 HD phone. Uh, so then moving on now, so we're going to start to talk about uh, how to uh, um, move uh, some of the uh, uh, functions off of the PBX. Uh, we've done disconnected the uh, the legacy phones, uh, and now what we're going to do is move to step five, which is uh, uh, moving more aggressively off of the PBX. And this, those last couple of phones, those analog phones and fax machines and other devices, uh, what we're going to do is expand the gateway or maybe add another media gateway uh, to the customer deployment with FXS ports, and then we can move those analog phones and fax machines over to the uh, link environment, again, using SPS to, to integrate those devices into the link environment. And at this stage, really what we've done is we've pretty much completely abandoned the PBX. You'll see there's nothing connected to it anymore. Uh, we've uh, pulled all the phones off of it. Uh, the trunking that's uh, still connected goes through the gateway. And at this point, if we wanted to, we could uh, uh, possibly even completely disconnect the PBX or shut it off. And one of the beauties of this strategy, by the way, and I wanted to point this out at this, at this uh, stage, is we've made a slow migration off of that PBX. Uh, we haven't had to do a real flash cut. This is one of the real benefits of, uh, of the strategy. So there goes the PBX. So next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move to step six. And step six is about really enabling some of the cost savings. And we could have done some of this earlier, uh, uh, but um, we chose to uh, present it here because it's a, it's a good time uh, to represent it, but this is about integrating in SIP trunking into the Microsoft Link environment. Uh, and how we do this is um, by enabling uh, a SIP trunking service provider uh, integrated into uh, uh, one of our enterprise session border controllers, which is uh, a software upgrade to our media gateways, and uh, integrating the uh, SIP trunking service into that ESBC uh, is just done over the LAN or over the uh, wide area network. And with this, we're able to now start to redirect some of our voice calling traffic uh, off of uh, the legacy PSTN uh, to our SIP trunks uh, and uh, slowly allowing us to disconnect some of the PSTN circuits, uh, reducing uh, you know, the number of circuits and reducing, uh, you know, of course, the cost that goes with the PSTN. This is really where the savings of moving to a pure SIP environment really start to kick in is a combination of the productivity enhancements that we've gotten from the UC environment uh, and integrated in, um, integrating in the SIP environment. As I noted earlier, too, you know, while we've chosen to do this at step six, it's not uncommon for folks to start to implement SIP trunking much earlier, even while the legacy PBX is still uh, is part of the picture. So now I'm going to move on to step seven, which is uh, taking a look at the branch office. You know, we often find businesses that uh, have retail outlets or have, uh, uh, for example, banks have, you know, branch offices or insurance companies have branches, and they need to be able to provide um, not only services to those employees, but 
provide some level of survivability in case the, uh, uh, the wide area network were to go down. And this is done by bundling a number of the functions together into an appliance called the Survivable Branch Appliance, or SBA. And in a, in a nutshell, what it is, is it's one of our uh, media gateways with a server module included inside of it that runs some Microsoft uh, Link software, the SBA software, uh, and also optionally a router and or firewall function as part of the uh, Enterprise Session Border Controller. Packaging all these functions into a single device uh, that can be uh, installed in the wiring closet of the branch office and provide that survivability without having to have a stack of all these separate different devices. And of course, it does uh, you know, a considerable improvement in uh, um, cost savings. So that's step seven. Um, step eight is uh, now moving to uh, enterprise mobility. And you know some of the studies that we've seen uh, from our uh, marketing efforts have shown that mobility is really one of the up and coming uh, mandatory features of unified communications. Uh, is about taking the office uh, um, you know, away from your desk and putting it in your pocket, uh, being able to change your presence, uh, be able to do instant messaging and calling all within the uh, UC environment, not in a separate domain uh, from your, uh, uh, your smartphone. And uh, we do this by integrating in uh, a soft client that goes on uh, a number of different environments uh, we call VMAS. And the VMAS client can be installed on iPhones or Androids or uh, Blackberries or Symbian. Uh, a number of different environments integrated in through what we call Mobility Plus, which is a combination of one of our media gateways plus a software load uh, to provide a gateway functionality between the link server and the uh, VMAS client. A very powerful tool that uh, brings, uh, again, the, you know, the link environment, the UC environment out to the desktop or out to the uh, uh, smartphone. And uh, trans. Uh, what it does is it moves a lot of the uh, uh, the voice traffic that used to be on the cellular network over to your campus-wide Wi-Fi environment. Uh, so now we've uh, actually implemented all the UC environments. Um, what I wanted to do is um, spend a minute here and two and talk about the you know, the results of this migration strategy. Really, what we've done at this point is uh, you know we've implemented this full UC environment. Uh, we've uh, reduced our operating costs by moving to SIP trunking. We've dramatically improved our organizational efficiency. Uh, we've added uh, enterprise mobility. Uh, we've uh, minimized our risks and disruptions by making this slow migration, uh, made it easier on employees, uh, and uh, made it you know migrated the users as they are ready, as opposed to forcing them on you know any one particular midnight to, to make a, a bold switch. Uh, we've also maintained the investment in that existing equipment. You know, we've some, often spent quite a bit of money on those PBXs and other equipment, and uh, we need to make a you know, logical migration off of it. And last but not least, we've simplified our branch office deployments. So I guess, um, Jeff, that's uh, that's our strategy here. Uh, and um, so I just wanted, I guess, uh, I'll bring you back in here and talk a little about where we go from here. Great. Thank you, Alan. It's uh, quite a thorough strategy. And during your, your uh, presentation, you talked a little bit about uh, some of the audio codes products and how they fit. Can you uh, give us a rundown again of, of the audio code products and, and how they fit in, not only to your strategy, but, but to unified communications as a whole? Great. Yeah, matter of fact, um, uh, here's a, just a, a, a quick uh, slide on some of the building blocks that we offered for our UC uh, strategy. Uh, you know, it ranges from our small little analog gateways and the left of the media pack product line uh, up through our mid-density uh, digital gateways, the median 800, median 1000, median 2000, and then our higher density median 3000 to 8000. And these have a number of different configurations from simple gateways uh, up through uh, SBA environments, uh, enhanced gateway environments for the Microsoft environment, uh, or full-blown enterprise session border controller configurations. One of the notes uh, we've also got here is uh, for the SBA appliances is uh, uh, we call out here immediate 800, immediate 1000, immediate 2000 SBAs uh, offering you know, connectivity to a range of different branch office sizes that, um, that fit in uh, to you know, different businesses of, of different environments. Thank you.
Yep. Well, also, too, yeah, it's just going to make a note too that uh, you know this diverse product portfolio um, is one of the reasons why the Microsoft sales team uh, this last uh, year have chosen us as the uh, 2011 U.S. Link Voice Gateway Partner of the Year, uh, which we probably were awarded at uh, Microsoft's WPC conference this summer. And of course, we're quite proud of uh, winning the award uh, and being selected by the Microsoft uh, sales team. Uh, as uh, being a you know, significant contributor uh, towards the uh, Microsoft Link environment. That's uh, quite a prestigious award. I, I, I was there at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference, and uh, that's, that's a huge, uh, huge event. So, Alan, obviously Audio Codes uh, offers a full range of products, and your, your strategy is uh, pretty comprehensive there. I'm sure our listeners learned a lot from this presentation, but where else can they go to get more information? Yeah, that's great. We, um, matter of fact, we've got uh, quite a few resources uh, that are available uh, to learn more. Uh, it starts with a landing page on the Audio Codes website at audiocodes.com slash link, L-Y-N-C. Uh, and there's plenty of resources there, all kinds of white papers, there's, uh, some videos. Uh, there's a, a number of brochures and other uh, supporting materials. Uh, on that site. We've also, too, of course, got uh, social media streams. Uh, Audio Codes maintains two of them, either uh, at Audio Codes or my own personal stream at, at Alan D. Percy. Uh, and we've, of course, got a LinkedIn group uh, under the name Audio Codes, and we've also got a, uh, an Audio Codes link resource group that's uh, uh, available for our partners and end customers that would be interested. Naturally, we archive a lot of our online webinars. Uh, we've also got a YouTube channel and a couple of different blogs uh, that I participate in uh, c contributing content um, to uh, uh, to these two different blogs. So with that, uh, I guess yeah, it brings us to the I guess the end of my material, um, Jeff. And I just uh, wanted to thank you for having us today. Well, thank you, Alan, and, and thank you for sharing all of this information with our listeners. I'm sure, as I said before, that uh, they're going to enjoy it and get a a good education out of it. Great. Well, thanks again for having us, and uh, look forward to uh, folks uh, uh, following up with us.